After the Pearl Harbor attack in December of 1941, the Japanese military planned to launch an amphibious assault to invade the continental United States through the west coast. To do so, 12 state-of-the-art Japanese submarines, each equipped with a sophisticated warplane, torpedoes, and deathly deck guns, were first sent to the coasts of California to destroy every merchant vessel they came upon. Additionally, the crews were ordered to wreak havoc among the civilian population in the coastal cities. But the mission would ultimately be restricted for fear of American retaliation. The threat of a possible Japanese invasion culminated in the so-called Battle of Los Angeles, where paranoia led some military personnel to spot Japanese aircraft hovering above the city. A new target. The attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, was only a fraction of Japan's master plan to cripple the United States. Before the attack was launched, the Imperial Japanese Navy sent 12 new I-type submarines from the 1st Submarine Squadron to Hawaiian waters. The I-type submarines had a range of 15,000 miles, a surface speed of 23 knots, carried 18 torpedoes, a 5.5-inch deck gun, and a crew of almost 100 men. They were over 355 feet long and could also house a dismantled warplane that could be launched from the submarine's deck. These colossal and potent submarines snuck past the American patrols in the Pacific and reached the shores of Pearl Harbor before the Japanese Air Force attacked. When no U.S. Navy vessels showed up after the surprise attack, the submarines were ordered to hunt down an American aircraft carrier headed to the mainland and establish positions in strategic points along the west coast. Their main objective was to attack any American merchant vessels that crossed their path. Once the submarines had spent all their torpedoes, they were to shell U.S. cities and lighthouses during Christmas Eve and retreat to the Marshall Islands to refuel. If the operation was successful, the submarines would become the tip of the spear for a possible amphibious invasion of the continental U.S. Like silent hunters, the crew of the submarines patiently waited for their targets. Some were stationed in Los Angeles Harbor, San Francisco Bay, Cape Blanco, Columbia Bay, Monterey Bay, in Cape Mendocino. While a Japanese task force set up a forward base in the Aleutian Islands to attack Anchorage and all of Alaska, submarine I-17, under orders of Kozo Nishino, spotted the freighter Samoa heading for San Diego on December 18th. It would be the beginning of the hunting, and the Japanese were ready to ravage the Californian shores. Attacking the West Coast The Japanese submarine crews were instructed to launch only one torpedo per merchant ship, if the ship did not go down, they had to use their 5.5-inch deck gun to get the job done. As the I-17 approached Samoa, a watchman spotted it and desperately yelled at the crew, quote, A submarine is attacking us. The crewman ran straight for the lifeboats. The submarine fired five shots from its deck gun that were quickly followed by a torpedo that missed the ship's hull by a small margin. With clouds of smoke rising to the sky and fire coming out of Samoa under the pitch-black night, Captain Nishino believed he had sunk the ship and disappeared. But Samoa, although severely damaged, survived with its crew intact and reached San Diego two days later. On December 20th, I-17 spotted the oil tanker Emidio 20 miles off Cape Mendocino and immediately engaged with it. Just before Emidio had its radio antenna destroyed by the I-17's deck gun, the crew was able to send a desperate message that said, quote, under attack by an enemy sub. Three sailors were thrown to the water and disappeared after one shot destroyed their lifeboat. Meanwhile, 36 crewmen rode away from the burning tanker while I-17 fired in their direction. The submarine then abruptly submerged when two U.S. bombers showed up and dropped depth charges to take it down. However, Captain Nishino took a chance and fired a torpedo at a medio. The missile hit the stern and penetrated the engine room. Two sailors that had not abandoned the ship jumped overboard and miraculously survived. The I-17 crew believed they had sunk a medio and disappeared again, but days later, the submarine ran aground at Crescent City, California. For the next few days, submarines I-21 and I-23 would attempt to sink the tankers HM Story and Agua World, but they were unsuccessful. On December 22, 1941, I-23 was finally able to sink a ship. It was the Union Oil Company's Montebello. Fortunately, her 36 crewmen survived. Two days later, on December 24, submarine I-19 attacked the freighter Absaroka with two torpedoes, but the Navy's subchaser USS Amethyst arrived and dropped depth charges to save the crew. The January 1942 issue of Life magazine would feature film actress Jane Russell standing in the hole of Absaroka's hull created by one of the Japanese torpedoes. She appeared holding a poster that said, quote, A slip of the lip may sink a ship. The words may sink a ship were crossed out, and the phrase may have sunk this ship was written in. 
Back in the Pacific waters, the Japanese submarines were running out of torpedoes after a week-long operation with middling results, so they began preparing to fire their deck guns against mainland targets on December 25th. However, just before the attack commenced, Japan's combined fleet radioed the submarines and canceled the operation because they feared severe American retaliation. Battle of Los Angeles The 12 Japanese submarines returned to friendly waters for resupply after the December attacks, and some of them returned to U.S. waters in February of 1942. The paranoia of a Japanese invasion among the American population was at an all-time high. Rumors of Japanese aircraft carriers approaching San Francisco Bay and Los Angeles Harbor terrorized the population, and blackouts would be programmed at certain hours of the day in Alaska and the West Coast to deceive the submarines lurking along the coast. On February 23rd, the I-17 submarine approached Californian waters once again. At 7 p.m., the submarine emerged near the Elwood Field. The deck gun opened fire and damaged a Richfield gasoline storage facility. The shots also destroyed a pump house and other buildings nearby. About 25 shells were fired, and although damage was minimal, Captain Nishino achieved his purpose of spreading fear in the population. Witnesses told the police that they saw the enemy submarine heading for Los Angeles, and they were not wrong. Japanese forces did show up the next day, but not in the way they were expected. On February 24th, the Office of Naval Intelligence, or ONI, issued a warning that a mainland attack on California was expected in the following hours. Paranoia went rampant, and thousands of citizens fled inland. A blackout was ordered, and several car crashes occurred as people raced in the streets with their lights off. Even air raid sirens went off at 2.25 a.m. After reports of enemy aircraft sightings, the military was summoned, and members of the Coast Artillery Brigade began firing 50 caliber machine guns and anti-aircraft shells into the air. Over 1,400 shells were fired, but no enemy aircraft were spotted. The blackout was then lifted at 7.21 a.m., and Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox said in a press conference that the alleged attack was a false alarm provoked by paranoia. Five civilians lost their lives as an indirect result from the anti-aircraft fire, and Japan achieved its purpose of perpetuating fear and launching a psychological warfare campaign. The attacks on California would also serve to justify President Franklin D. Roosevelt's controversial internment of Japanese Americans in the U.S. Still, the Japanese government always maintained that they had flown no aircraft over California during the war. It wasn't until 1983 that the U.S. Office of Air Force History officially concluded that the cause of the initial alarm and unexplained sightings had not been an incoming Japanese attack, but that the evidence pointed towards another unlikely source, meteorological balloons. Please like and subscribe to watch more content about Dark Seas and our Dark Documentaries channels. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the little-known Japanese submarine attacks on American soil.